What's going on, Warriors? It's Coach Jay. We're going to dive in today. We're going to talk about protein and type 1 diabetes. Key things you need to know about protein when it comes to controlling your blood sugars and getting things more balanced overall. Again, if you don't understand some of these things or not talked about, it can have you chasing blood sugars more than you want to. This is the video for you. A lot of the things you're going to hear here, you likely never heard before. So we're going to dive in, give you a perspective that's going to help you to add to the bigger piece of the puzzle that you're putting together for yourself as a type 1 diabetic. And if it's your first time on the channel, guys, I help type 1 diabetics to build muscle, burn fat, and control their blood sugars. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification, hit that like button so you guys don't miss out on any of these videos. When we think about protein, we have to think about what is it about protein that could potentially lead to blood sugar spikes? Because maybe you're someone that says, I just bolus for protein. But what's important for us for type ones is knowing the why we're doing things and the how things work. Because when you compare these two together, the how it works, and then the why you're doing it, now you put yourself in a good position to be able to move the ball forward in a way where you get better control overall. And so there's three things that we're gonna go over today specifically and we'll expand on that in later YouTube videos as well. The first thing I wanna talk about is gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis just takes amino acids, the building blocks of protein, and can convert that into glucose. This can lead to blood sugar spikes later on. Remember, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. You've got nine essential amino acids and 11 non-essential amino acids. And so our body with the essential amino acids needs to get this from the food that we eat because we, our bodies cannot make these amino acids. But you also have non-essential amino acids as well where your body can make these amino acids. You can put this together to help to build things like proteins and muscle tissues in the body. These amino acids can then create things like polypeptides, Polypeptides are just chains of amino acids strung together in the right way based on what your DNA to create other protein structures in your body. Think about something like insulin as a polypeptide. Now, when it comes to impacting our blood sugar levels, when you eat food like a protein, remember it's gonna break down into amino acids. Those amino acids that aren't being used right away for energy or amino acids that are not being used to, in the, to repair muscle tissue to help you to build muscle tissue, what's gonna end up happening is that your body can actually convert those amino acids to things like fatty acids and also glucose. Glucose specifically is where we're gonna see more of the rise in blood sugar. But what's important to note is that this rise in blood sugar level through something like gluconeogenesis is gonna take a few hours. Through deamination, it's basically the breakdown of the amino acid where an amino group is removed from the amino acid. Then what we see is the conversion of that amino group into ammonia. Then through ammonia, it gets converted to urea because ammonia is toxic for our body, so our body has to convert that now into urea. What's left is a carbon skeleton. This carbon skeleton, then through the process of gluconeogenesis, can then be used to create glucose. This is why some amino acids, on top of being both essential and conditional, some amino acids are glucogenic and some of them are ketogenic, meaning that through the process of things like deamination and being able to break them down, their skeleton can be used to make glucose. Also, what you're gonna see is there's, they can also be used to create fatty acids as well. And so the fatty acid conversion is your ketogenic amino acids, where some of them are able to convert more to the ketogenic state or the fatty acids, which can then be used for energy. And some of them can be used to be converted into glucose, the glucogenic amino acids. This process is also something that does not happen right away. And so if you're someone that notices that your blood sugar is starting to spike later on, let's say it's two to three to four hours down the line after having a protein meal, that's likely due to gluconeogenesis because of the time frame it takes to rot to spike your blood sugar. But what a lot of people are seeing is that the spike is happening earlier on. So let's say you start seeing something like this happen with gluconeogenesis, where we know that typically you're gonna to start to see that conversion of those amino acids converted into glucose post two and a half hours on average, let's say. And so when that happens, you might notice that things are good and then all of a sudden you start to come up over here like this, almost as if you're having a high fat meal. Right, and so that's typically what you would see if it's more related to gluconeogenesis. If it's more related to something else, which is called glucagon, now glucagon in your body 
can get triggered when you're having a protein in the absence of carbohydrates or insulin. Also, what you're seeing is, is glucagon can still be activated if you're having something like carbohydrates and insulin, but it's not going to be as activated as much when you do add in the addition of carbohydrates and insulin because insulin suppresses glucagon release. And so that's why insulin and carbohydrates can help to balance out the impact of what happens when you have higher protein meals. If it's glucagon, what you're going to see is more of a spike like this on the blood sugar before it comes down. See the difference? That right there, initial, you're gonna see more of that spike because glucagon's gonna get triggered right away when you have the protein. Glucagon's job is to break down stored glucose in the form of glycogen, release that back into the blood to spike your blood sugar level. Think about when you're having a low. When you're having a low blood sugar, your body's gonna trigger glucagon. Glucagon's job is to help your body to release stored glucose from around your liver to help to flood your blood with glucose again to help to raise your blood sugar. So you're gonna see something like this when it's more related to glucagon rather than it being related to gluconeogenesis. So that's the difference. Gluconeogenesis is a process. Glucagon is a hormone that your body and your A cells or your pancreas release. Now, your beta cells might not work, but your glucagon, your A cells still work. They're just dysregulated, so there's a difference. Also, you might notice that happen in the first 20 minutes. Another thing that's important to note where you would see a curve like this as well is cortisol. There's also something called mealtime cortisol release. Mealtime cortisol release shows us that you're gonna have a similar release as you would have when you have protein with glucagon. But what you're gonna notice, and this could happen if you're having carbohydrates or not protein as well, now you see two things that are likely gonna be the result if you notice that you're spiking up higher than usual is gonna be glucagon, most likely, or cortisol, most likely, right? which is causing that initial spike to happen. Now, the thing with cortisol, again, if we combine our, our what we know about protein also triggering glucagon, is you might notice more of a higher spike of cortisol with meals where you have higher protein and more limited amounts of carbohydrate. You might actually notice more of an increase in cortisol, just like you would glucagon with lower carbohydrate. So now that you understand three different factors that are potentially gonna lead to more blood sugar spikes. Now, one way you can determine this as well for yourself is to isolate, do testing. And I have a lot of videos that explain how to run a test the right way so you can more or less understand what your body needs to take and if this is something that's actually impacting your blood sugar specifically because everyone's body is gonna be slightly different even though we're talking about this here today. Now what you can do is, let's say you wanna test carbohydrates and your ratios. Have something simple, a carbohydrate where you can count the carbohydrate count on an easy because we don't want anything in terms of insulin you give yourself to be the result of the fact that you didn't carbohydrate count correctly. So for example, one cup of cooked white rice, and this is what we use with a lot of our clients to start, a cup of cooked white rice is 45 grams of carbohydrates. So now have those carbohydrates without protein. See what happens to your blood sugar a few times you do that in the day. Is it typically coming back down normal or is it not? Then what you can do the next day is add protein to that meal. Maybe consider adding 30 grams of protein to start with the same meal. Don't change anything else. The same quantity, the same thing that you, the same type of carbohydrate you had. Then keep the chicken breast the same. 30 grams of chicken breast. Don't do 31 meal and 60 another meal because now you've altered the results because maybe the higher protein might trigger it or maybe it doesn't trigger it. Uh, maybe maybe the higher protein triggers it where having 30 grams doesn't. And so now you can start to test things over time to find what works. And what you're gonna do again the second time is, uh, the second day is pair the protein with the same carbohydrate you had the day before. And if you still notice things are going pretty level, then you're good. But if you notice it's going up more with the protein, ah, now just gauge how much on average is, is that shift changing when you add the protein, are you spiking more like 50 mgdl to 100 mgdl, or are you spiking more like 20 mgdl and it's kind of negligible or not really anything to be too concerned about? And so that's how you can say what the difference is between the protein when you have it and the carbohydrates that you have it, and then work your way from there. Maybe you have 100 grams of protein, spike it up and see what happens if it really does has a major impact on your glucose levels at 100 grams of protein with carbohydrate versus. 30 or 50 grams of protein with carbohydrates. I hope this helps you guys out. I know we dove a little deeper on some of these topics here today, just to give you guys more of the how the body works as a type one and why you might do what you do or increase your insulin for certain things. Because some people might not even notice. Remember, everyone's different. Some people might not notice anything happening at all, right? And if you're in a position where you notice 
nothing happening at all, then you don't have to do anything. You add the protein, maybe you notice that with the protein and the carbohydrate together, your insulin now is suppressing glucagon release, you don't get as much of a cortisol spike and you're good to go. But if you're someone who does notice this, you could identify and isolate which process is actually hitting you the hardest and when, and then start to make adjustments based on what you're seeing. All right, I hope that helped you guys out. It's Coach J. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys like that video, man. I don't, I got you guys, man. I don't know what else how to tell you. We're talking thousands of hours of studies. I don't just come on here just to say what I'm saying, just say, hey, this is my opinion. If something's my opinion, I'll tell you guys. If something is generally rooted in something, trust me when I say behind the scenes, which you guys don't see, is the thousands of hours of studying that I'm doing and the studies we're putting together to actually put a board up that makes sense for type 1 diabetics instead of just guessing and going and doing the same things that's leaving you stuck. All right, it's Coach Jay. I'll see you guys in the next episode.